Oh, Corey. Oh, Jake. We're back in person. I don't understand what's happening here. From For anyone that's listening, which there isn't, um, <laughs> we're back in person for the first time in over, I don't know, nearly two years, right? Yeah. Um, it's because Jake was very hesitant <laughs> yeah. um, about killing me. Yeah. I mean, that is true. That is true. Um, I think the last time we were in this room together, we talked about Bob Iger for about two and a half hours. Yeah. You killed me. I wanted to kill you. I wanted to kill Bob Iger. Um, and I hope that there's not a repeat to that. So the new news with Bob Iger. Holy fuck. <laughs> uh, three, three minutes in and I'm already a minute and a half in and I'm already cussing that you bring up fucking Bob Iger. I mean, Bob Iger doesn't even work at Disney anymore. That's so. the first thing you want to talk about with us being back in person. What we should be focused on is the fact that you're seeing me in the flesh. Sorry. I didn't wear pants. It's a lot of flesh there. Too. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a very fleshy person. Yeah. Um, it is fun to be back in studio. This might be my last show as Jake is probably going to pass on the virus to me and I will shortly die and he will not, he will live guilt free by virus. He means HIV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be young again. Oh yeah. Because no, I have AIDS. You That's not <laughs> fun. That's not a joke. How is that a joke? You sick. Because well, you said, oh, to be young again, because I said I had HIV. And then you're like, when I was young, I had HIV. But now I have AIDS. <laughs> so you've advanced yourself? <laughs> <laughs> this this is what happens when this we get is, back in the same fucking room. This, is, uh, this has gone off the rails. <laughs> we haven't even been live for more than two and a half minutes, and we're already off... Off the off the side of the road here. Uh, th- this is still the vignette. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't hit the button yet. I have something to say about Miley Cyrus. What does it mean? Her new music, right? What does it mean? I really feel like she's just yelling. I think all of her music is... Well, no, not all of her music. I feel like, you know, earlier Cyrus, like... She actually had melody yeah. and tone, and now she's just screaming. And there were like moments where she did it, the little scream or whatever. Now it seems like the whole thing. I, you know what? Honestly, not heard a beat of any of Miley Cyrus's. She's really, new music. she's really doubling down on the fact that Dolly Parton is her godmother, and she's like, I am Dolly Parton now. She is so far removed from. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton isn't even part of her DNA. Dolly Parton is just her godmother. Dolly Parton's purpose in Miley Cyrus's life is if her parents die, Dolly Parton takes care of her. That's what godparents are to do. God, Ma, Dolly, she does. Miley has no, no, not a drop of Dolly Parton DNA in, in any part of her flat ass. What if that? What if that's like the secret? Like. Miley Cyrus is actually Dolly Parton's child that she had when she was like 65 years old because we all know that she's now currently 105. She is 105 years old, and I doubt it very seriously that anything that's going to come out of Dolly Parton's vagine is not going to be Miley Cyrus. Yeah. I would expect more out of Dolly Parton's vagine. For real, though, like Miley Cyrus's new music is like she's going more country and she's doing the yelly thing like Dolly Parton does. Does Dolly Parton yell? I mean, she kind of does. I don't think Dolly Parton yells. She kind of does. She kind of does, though. Really? Like, sometimes she does. I've never heard Dolly Parton Like, sometimes yell. she doesn't, but sometimes she does. There's only one song <laughs> of Dolly Parton that comes to me, and that's, I'm working nine to five. Oh, see, what I... What a way to make a living. I always think of Jolene, 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 Jolene. See, that's not yelling to me. I mean... Not not Jolene. Jolene is way different than what does it mean? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, way different than that. Should we uh, start the show? I guess proper? so. <laughs> you sure? You think? Are you ready? You sure? Before I start the show, can I ask you one question? What does it mean? <laughs> 
Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I forgot to do it. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. What is up, boyos? Welcome to the Jake and Corey podcast. I am Jake. That is Corey. What is up, Corey? I will admit I was wrong. Oh, yeah? What were you wrong about? Alec Baldwin did shoot someone on a movie set. And when Jake told me about it, I thought I smelled a rat because... He was on a movie set shooting a movie that had a storyline about someone accidentally getting killed. And I thought it was pub for the upcoming movie. Well, a few days have passed. I've taken a little deeper dive. And this is one horrific, catastrophic fuck up of a production that led yeah. To the unfortunate demise of a cinematographer. And Jake, I hold that close to my heart because I myself am a cinematographer. Now, not for movies, for sports and other type shows that require camera work. But this story has like completely grown hair from the last time. You and I talked about it. You hit me to it. And my first impression was I smell a rat. I was thinking it was going to go down the lines of like a Tom Hanks. When Tom Hanks has a movie coming out, we always hear Tom Hanks in the news prior to his movie coming out. I called, I called shenanigans when Tom Hanks came out to say that he has coronavirus. A month later, he had a movie come out. So there's, I was thinking that that's what this was, and this was going to be just all some hullabaloo story about the movie Rust that Alec Baldwin is currently filming, so and it's not. Before you continue, for should we like fill in the audience for anyone that doesn't know? It's dude. It's like a week after it's happened. How do people not know? It's I mean, everywhere. Yeah, I mean, sure. But, but yeah, go ahead, set the table. So last week. Um, in games. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Last week in games. <laughs> um, but last week, uh, basically, they were on this. Uh, Alec Baldwin was on the set of some Western. I don't remember. I think it's called Rust. Yeah, it's called Rust. Um, I who, thought it was like after the video game Rust. No, no, no. Uh, which is a movie based on a 13 year old who was accused of murder after accidentally shooting someone. Murder? Um, and on the set of that movie, Alec Baldwin shot a, well, it's not a prop gun, right? They don't have prop guns, don't shoot blanks. It's a real gun, but with a blank in it, or what he thought was a blank, um, shot and killed. Uh, cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring director Joel Souza. Um, and you know, lots of coincidences. Like I said, the movie is based on a 13 year old who, um, accidentally shot someone and was being accused of murder. Murder. And also, oddly enough, Alec Baldwin is 13 years old. So no. <laughs> his wife is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> knowing Hollywood. Uh, yeah. Well, he just marries very young. But uh, yeah. But like, I've heard a lot of stuff too. You said that to me the other day where you're like, this smells like. I thought it was a rat. But I'm like, yo, dude, someone died. Okay. Like, I don't think they would like. But dude, there has been many a times in Hollywood where to build buzz behind something, they, they they predicated off of someone's misfortune and death has been used before. I mean, can, do you believe that the Batman movie that Heath Ledger died during filming would have been as successful 
if Heath Ledger's death wasn't attached to it? Um, yeah, I think it would have been. I think there there would have been an inkling of success that it would not have gotten because you can't tell me that people didn't go see that movie that normally probably wouldn't have gone and seen it based off the fact I mean, that the news was Heath even Ledger if, died. Even if that is true, right, where it's like maybe the movie did gain more success because of Heath Ledger's death. Um, I don't think Heath Ledger's death was a publicity stunt. No, no, not a publicity stunt, but they will use the death sure. for tying it to advertisement for the movie. I guess, but I, I really don't think they were using but that. But that's what a, I was thinking this when is you not, first told me this. This, is not adver- this makes the movie look really bad. Um, oh, totally, because when you take when you dive deeper into it, this production for this movie was fucked up from the floor up. Mm -hmm. There was news released that there were crew members that quit the production days before the shooting because they were concerned of safety issues on the set and COVID protocols not being followed. In addition to that, there was released an affidavit that states that people had report that there were actually two prior instant incidents relating a gun misfiring or firing an actual bullet instead of a blank. There were two instances prior to the one instance that we're hearing about that killed the cinematographer. So this was, there was a, it seems like there's a lot of bullshit leading up to this. And as a person, not to sound pompous, but as a person that has actually been on movie sets, this was a fuck up from the script up. Well, and it goes so far back that, or it goes so far down that even Alec Baldwin himself, before this happened, was complaining about how the crew was severely overworked on this set in particular. And this comes right at that, right at the tail of the the IATSE strike, um, or the IATSE almost strike, I guess, where IATSE is a big, you know, film union. Mm-hmm. Where, it, you know, it involves like, um, I, I guess, cinematographers and, and, you know, camera guys, uh, the boom mic guy, you know, basically everyone involved with filmmaking that aren't writers and directors and producers are part of the IATSE union. And, um, and I guess actors, because they have their own union as well. But uh, th- they were on the verge of a strike. Because a lot of these people were saying, we are so overworked in the film industry to the point where we're working 17-hour days, and when that ends, the 17-hour days, we're, you know, like the day may end at 3 in the morning, and we're expected to be back at 6 six in the morning. Yeah. And that's after a 17-hour day previously. And, you know, so... Uh, they came to some sort of agreement with IATSE. It's yet to be ratified, but this comes right at the, the tail end of that. And, um, you know, if, if this production was considered one of the worst productions and what people are claiming, like, hey, I'm working 17 hour days and that's a normal production, right. you know, imagine how bad this this set is. And and that that like if you're working those kind of hours and you're a prop master and you're just kind of going through the motions of like loading these blanks, I could see how something gets fucked up. You're like, you know, they say that being extremely tired is just as bad as being, you know, basically blackout drunk. Yeah. So yeah. Drunk. And here's the thing that a lot of people are kind of just, I don't think that there was necessarily a real bullet have they come out and said that there was an actual bullet? Because here's the thing. When you're on a movie set, you fire off what they call a cold gun. And a cold gun is a gun that has blanks in it. Even the blanks, you're still dealing with some level of discharge. There's still something that comes out of the gun. Gunpowder. Gunpowder. Um, there's, there's, all, there's, there's shrapnel. There's still projectile. There's gases in, in these, in these, these blanks, but they're not normally lethal unless used at a very close range. So if this situation with Alec Baldwin 
if he was close enough to the camera, there's a good chance that the blank could have um, been the, the thing that, that killed the cinematographer. And if that's the case, because what people are trying to figure out now, what a lot of people are surmising is that who's to blame? I don't think Alec Baldwin is at fault in this because no, Alec Baldwin wasn't even Alec Baldwin at the time that he fired it. He was his character at the time. And when you're on a movie set, and you're an actor, you have, you have no control over what you're holding, where you're standing, what you're saying, what you're wearing, all of that's done for you, for the character off camera. Now is the prop master at fault for handling this? Or is it possibly the director at fault for setting a camera shot or a frame too close to a cold gun that is going to have a projectile anyway. And speaking that the director also got hit too. That might very well be the case because that's the big question. Now who's at fault? Yeah. And you know, a, a lot of people are saying, well, like you can bring it back to Alec Baldwin because he's also a producer on the movie. Not just an actor. But he wasn't it. behind the camera. He was in front of the camera at the time. Sure, but like, you know, as a producer, part of your job is, you know. Overseeing the crew. Overseeing the, the production. Uh, it's literally a producer. You're overseeing the production. Right. Uh, but he's not the executive producer. And usually a producer credit when you're an actor like that just means uh, we'll give you points on the movie. Yeah, and we'll give you a couple of extra we, shekels. Basically, we can't afford to pay you a flat rate, but we'll give you a percentage of the movie by making you a producer. That's basically what that means. And I imagine Alec Baldwin probably had more to do with maybe writing because he's a writer, you know. Um, but and, and then as far as a director, maybe, you know, he, he does. I, I have no idea. I don't want to make any sort of uh claims because I have no idea. Um but you know this isn't the first time this has happened on a on a film set. No. Um you know this famously happened to Brandon Lee in the nineties uh when they were filming The Crow and Brandon Lee was Bruce Lee's son. Also fantastic movie. But they shot a, a prop gun there was a piece of something in there. It, like you said it wasn't actually a bullet. It was like a a rock or, or just just some piece of shrapnel well, it's a little when you, plastic type thing or like when you shoot a prop gun right uh what you're shooting basically is it, it, it's, it's gunpowder yeah it's just gunpowder which is why if you look up film shots the camera person will often have plexiglass in front of them to protect themselves from gunpowder splatter but if you shoot that gun enough you know, you're going to get some buildup of either gunpowder or some sort of calcium or something. Right. And that can come out. And that's what happened to Brandon Lee. I'm wondering if that's what happened here. Well, there was reports that there were three prop guns on set. Um, It could very well be where there is a little buildup dust or rock or something. I mean, they're out in the middle of Santa Fe County, California. I thought it was in New Mexico. Was it New Mexico? I think it's New Mexico. Um, Santa Fe, you're right, New Mexico. There could have been a rock that got into it, but even the blank, if you ever look at a blank before it's shot, there's different versions of it. Like you have blanks that they use for TV and movie that puts out a, a powder blast. Uh, there's blanks that put out um, an actual um, small fire explosion to make it look like you know a bullet actually came out of it. Um, everything's not CGI these days. So, but there are still things, even when you're shooting a cold gun, which is industry speak for a gun loaded with blank, you can, there's still something that can come out. I haven't seen anything on this story that says that it was an actual bullet. Have you seen anything that said it was an actual bullet? I haven't, but it does make me wonder that maybe on this set, um, they were doing scenes where they're using blanks, but maybe they were also doing scenes where they're using like real bullets shooting that at target. That would be stupid. Why would anybody shoot a movie these days with actual bullets? I don't know. But if they're doing some sort of scene where it's like they're shooting at targets and it's like, well, let's just use real bullets because it's more realistic or whatever. That, um, would, be, that would be stupid. The, the computers and CGI allows you to accomplish the same effect, if not even better. If this comes out to the fact that there were actual real real live ammunition on this set 
that that would be stupid. You know, the the thing that makes me wonder that though, uh, mm-hmm. is the fact that both you know the cinematographer and the director both got shot. Because I'm thinking if it's if it's a calcium buildup or you know some sort of buildup of something, you'd think it would hit one person, maybe kill them, but it would end there. It kept going, but it ca- it must have gone. I'm I'm imagining the the director was just sitting behind the cinematographer, and it like went through, and then hit him. See in my or yeah, they were you know flanning the, fanning the 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 hammer, you know, because it is a western. So maybe he did a little spin move and pop 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 pop, you know, yeah, and true. maybe that happened. And there's more than one bullet that was in there typically it was a revolver you know typically when they're when you're on a movie set and they're all ran differently so take this for what it is but typically the director is a ways away from the actual physical camera um but i just saw this on this um on cnn.com where it says director photography killed movie director injured after Alec Baldwin. So was it a director of photography or was it a cinematographer? Those are two different people. A director of photography tells the cinematographer what to do. The director tells the director of cinematographer photography what to do. So what was her actual role? What was her actual position on the set? Was she actually on the camera? Because every movie set that I've ever seen, she was the, the cinematographer. She was okay. So she was on camera. Yeah. Okay. Typically Jake, The camera is set up in the shot. The director has already done everything. And then the director retreats over to a um, tent of some sort with monitor and watches what the cinematographer captures. I mean, so it's interesting that they got shot. And I think you're thinking of like a pretty big production. And what I'm thinking is this is some indie movie. And I know it's hard to believe. Alec Baldwin? But like, what the what the fuck is Alec Baldwin? He's fucking boss baby. He is boss baby. But like, also, you have to consider if he's a producer on this movie, they couldn't pay him money. They were hoping on a, you know, being able to pay him back on a return on investment or whatever. I just, so, I just think. But the, I'm imagining. I'm going to show you a picture here. Yeah. I'm imagining they were doing something like that. Okay. Where I'm, sh- I'm showing Corey right now, like a guy who's holding the camera, and then another guy standing behind him basically what that is in industry speak is that that's a travel shot yeah so like basically where the action moves the entire production crew moves along with it and you know it could have been that setup as well and also every director is different some directors are more interested in their actors and getting a good performance out of the actors and just trusting everything to cinematography that's more of you know, I like those kind of directors. That's more of a, you know, a Steven Spielberg is sort of like that where True. he, he has a big vision, but he trusts his cinematographers to do stuff. But then there's other directors who are very into cinematography and will like literally hold the camera sometimes. And they and have that, little mini cameras too. Yeah. And that's more of like a, a JJ Abrams or, or a Zack Snyder who like to do stuff like that. So. Um, and, uh, what's our boys, uh, squad cast, what's uh, his, um, uh, Kevin, Smith. Kevin Smith, Kevin yeah. Smith is a, on he leaves the actors to do what they want to do he's he focuses more on the cinematography this is what i i'm more of a writer's director true this is what i've kind of surmised about this whole thing so far from what i know and what i've uh, read about it this seems like this was a fucked up production from the beginning because there was also reports that union workers walked off the set and then the production brought in non-union workers in industry speak Non-union means amateur because if you're a union employee, you've got some skills. And if you're out in Hollywood or you're out anywhere filming any type of movie and you're non-union, that means you're green in Hollywood. That means less than five years of doing something. Yeah, five years seems like a long time to do something, but that's green in Hollywood. You're still an amateur at that point. So because they lost the union employees and the union production crew members, and then they brought in non-union production crew members. That was a quality of production backstep big time. And then also another thing that I've, I discovered is that the prop master, the armorer that was handling all the guns, 
she was also very new. She had only done one other movie prior to this. And she had also vo uh, vocalized some concerns about the handling of the props and the guns and the guns. So it just seems like this is just a big, huge cornucopia of fuck ups. Yeah. I, you know, I've heard that the industry standard when you're shooting a prop gun with blanks is you're supposed to be like at least like 20 feet away from the camera. And there was some behind the scenes footage of them shooting the gun and the dude's right up on the camera. See, that's a misstep. Yeah. That's a huge misstep. That's why you have lenses. You have prime lenses. You have long range lenses to shoot shit like that. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't know who Joel Souza is. Maybe I should look him up. Uh, but yeah, I've I've never heard of Joel Souza. I've never heard of Joel Souza either. Um, the 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 horrific thing is, and we're not going to play it on the air, is that the nine one one call was released. Um, and um, and you're right, it was it, Russ was being shot in Bonanza Creek Ranch, New Mexico. Um, is where the movie set was was um taken uh, was was being filmed. Um, there are so many levels of protection that typically take place overseers that take place on this. Maybe this was a very, very low budgeted movie because they should have OSHA out there. They should have law enforcement out there. They should have all of these levels of, of people. I mean, dude, even now in California, when you film a movie, they have a COVID-19 protocol advisor. Someone that's supposed to overlook and make sure that, COVID-19 protocols are being followed. Uh, Joel Souza has directed six films or five films, excluding Rust. That's a greenhorn. And um, I've never heard of any of them. I've never heard of, of Joel Souza either. Hannah's Gold, Ghost Squad, Christmas Trade, which was just a, a, a video short, Break Night, and Crown Vic. Christmas Trade? Yeah. Really? I've never heard of that. Either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is an am this is an amateur shit. I bet you, Alec Baldwin. What are you doing? I mean, we like to think that Alec Baldwin's like this huge star, but like, really? Yeah, he's not really. I mean, what did he do prior to this match game? I mean, the last thing I could really think of him doing besides Donald Trump and Boss Baby, um. With 30 rock 30 rock yeah that's that's really it that's it and then like pre that what can what was he doing i i have no idea i don't know he's it's crazy I, I remember him being in like lifetime movies and that's not even a joke i remember him being in lifetime movies so like i it's not totally outside the realm of possibility that alec baldwin baldwin was just doing some indie movie and why wasn't this movie rust based off of the video game rust for real let's get and a rust let's movie. get a rust movie that would be a great movie let's get minecraft the movie oh god just just a whole i can just see that now there's gonna be a run on freaking um boxes of people trying to break them with square fucking hammers and swords <laughs> rust game Mine, Minecraft is, is ridiculously stupid. I love Minecraft. It's crazy. Uh, break rocks, break rock, break rocks, break rock, break rocks. Here's a pig that's shaped like a rock. Break the pig. You know, I, I don't get it. <laughs> but I wish the movie was based off of the yeah, I'm, I'm, video game. It's, it definitely seems like a, like an indie film. Uh, it definitely seems like it's not a big production, especially when you look at the set. There's a bunch of set photos and it looks like there's yeah. they're just in the middle of the desert and there's like one ranch. It's not like they have like a big set there. And, and also You're Alec fucking Baldwin. Isn't he an Emmy Award winning actor? I guess. Doesn't he have an Emmy or something? Fucking hell, dude. Is the if it's a, if it's an indie film, the paycheck couldn't have been that big for him. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is if he got a producer role and it's almost like a it's like a roll of the dice for him where it's like they can't pay you up front, but if the movie somehow ends up making money, uh, that's actually Sir Sir Alec Guinness uh, of Star Wars fame, yeah. who played Obi Wan Kenobi. There's no way in fuck he would have done Old Ben Kenobi uh, 
if they had not offered him a producer's role and they offered him 3% and cause it star Wars at the time was just a little indie movie. And yeah, like, but 3% of what it became. Exactly. It's huge. And that's, that's kind of the gamble you're taking when doing these indie movies. And if he believed in the script, you know, Alec Baldwin in particular, if he, if he believed in the script, like I was just saying, what the fuck has Alec Baldwin done lately? If this was some sort of movie that you watched it and you're like, wow, Alec Baldwin really brought it, that could potentially, you know, bring him back to. You think he's hard up for cash? Financially? I mean, maybe. I, I definitely think. He's got after, a lot of kids. I definitely think after the Trump impersonation, he needs a. Um, Which wasn't that great. I mean, it was fine, but it was, you know, it was like. as great as new guy. I guess, but like, you know, it was definitely iconic, I suppose. Um, but like after that, he definitely needs like a, a brand rebuild. It kind of reminds me of like when um, um, Matthew McConaughey um, back in the day, you know, he was known as the rom-com guy. Mm-hmm. But then he's like, you know what? I, I want to like rebuild my brand. And he ended up doing um, Dallas Buyers Club which I'm sure he didn't make a lot of money from, but the script was so good that he can turn it down. And then he ended up doing um, True Detective, which is a television show, which he would never do that. But he did it probably because the script was so good. And he's like, this is going to help my brand. And then he ended up doing Interstellar and stuff. Do you think the mo- Do you think Russ gets completed? Do you think they're going to complete the, the movie after all of this? Yeah, I, th- I think they have to. Yeah, Not necessarily. They don't have to if they're not dealing with a boatload of union workers. I think once you're once you're in um once you're this far into production, you can't. There's there's uh too many moving parts. You get you got Who would um who is that guy that's going to come in and be the new cinematographer? Who's that guy? Who is that who is that soulless? To come in, well, I definitely and th- fill this in, <laughs> dude. I wouldn't take that job for for all the tea in China. I definitely think filming stops for at least a week, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Who wants to? Okay, can you imagine that? Indeed, posting cinematographer wanted former cinematographer uh, dead can attend funeral. You know what I mean? Who wants to be that new? I, dude, that movie is forever. That movie has the Macbeth curse on it now. I would not, I would take my losses. I would, at, at whatever studio is tied to it, whatever backwards Tumblr page having the studio is behind this movie, take your loss. You lost, file the insurance claim on it, pay off everybody that you can. If you got non union workers, they're probably not, their contracts probably don't tell them to get paid if, if there's a death on, on set. All the big guys will get paid, the executive producer, the producer, the director. The family will probably get paid if whatever the cinematographer was and the family is probably going to sue if they found out that it was negligence on, on the behalf of anybody. But this movie does not need to continue. But I think that's all of those reasons you just stated are why they have to finish the movie because they need to make money. On they it. have insurances to cover these but types like, of situations. Here's the thing, though, with The Crow, The Crow ended up being finished and The Crow ended up being a very, very good movie. Well, but somebody wasn't somebody wasn't murdered on that set. Brandon Lee was. Yeah, that's right. You know that. that And that was accidental. Yeah. And that actor who shot him, uh, he quit Hollywood after that. And this is going to fuck up Alec Baldwin forever. There's no way. Alec Baldwin was hanging by a string prior to this. Yeah, I feel horrible for him. Now I'm never going to be able to become a contestant on a match game. <laughs> but the other point I was going to make is uh, there was another tragedy back in the, I think it was either the late 80s or early 90s, the Twilight Zone movie. Um, uh, there was a scene where it was two kids and a man, and they're running through this lake, and they had a helicopter shot. And mm-hmm. there was a rule on the set where the helicopter couldn't come down too low. Otherwise, it would be an issue. Helicopter went down too low. Helicopter crashed. Helicopter decapitated all three of them. Oh, they lost their heads. That was at the beginning of them filming that movie. They finished the movie. The movie came out. I would not. There would be no way. I would, Dude, I would be done. There's, Dude, there is death. Keep your money. Someone's dead. 
there is deaths on movies all the time. Triple X. Uh, How do you know this type of shit? I, Why I, do, do you just like have a file somewhere in your bedroom that says movie deaths and you just review it every night? I'm the king of useless trivia. But Triple X, you know, the movie famously starring Vin Diesel, my man. Uh, your man. My man, Vin Diesel. Um, he There was a, a stunt that went awry. And he, you know, the stunt man did, he did a bungee jump scene. Head hit the top of a a bridge. They finished the movie. That was an accident. This was an accident. Yeah, this was an accident. But I still wouldn't. I I I don't know. I guess I I guess I'm a different creature. I would not finish this movie. I'm not saying I would either. I'm saying they probably will though. And they're gonna. Well, they're already they were already working with some crackpot team. So now I'm sure that the crackpot's not going to come back. So now they're going to have to get the crackhead production team to come in and and finish this movie. It's just so fucked up. It's just so fucked up. I wouldn't. I mean, but people. I mean, all because of the almighty cotton green is what's driving everybody to to continue to do something after this horrific tragedy. The cotton green. Yeah, money. Oh, yeah. money's made out of cotton. I was going to say green paper, but money isn't paper. It's cotton. I want to I want to look up real quickly here. Uh, like who who is what? Why is, do you want you want to focus more on death? No, no, no. I want to I want to know the production company behind the movie, Russ. Uh, that'd be a good question. I have no idea. And nor that I see it mentioned in any of the articles that I read. All one of them that I read and drew my conclusion on. El Dorado Pictures. Never heard of them. Never heard of that in my life. Bow, bow, bow. Say it again. What is the product called? El Dorado Pictures. Bow, bow, bow. I click on El. I click on El Dorado Pictures. Bow, bow, bow. And it just brought me to a TikTok page. Alec Baldwin's Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> is it Alec Baldwin's company? He is done if this is his production company. I feel he like it is. He is finished. He is finished. The battle is over. <laughs> yeah, it was announced that Alec Baldwin would produce and star in Rust. Wow. It is his production company. Yeah. Dude, he's fucked. He's fucked. There's no way he, he mentally he can't bounce back from this. No, I I think yeah. he's got to retire. This is a this is definitely a career ender. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I think this that other guy, the Brandon Lee death thing, that guy quit after quit the industry after that, didn't he? In all fairness, though, that guy was not Alec Baldwin. You That's know, true. He was not Boss Baby. I you know the only thing I know him from is from that movie. Right. So like he may have retired anyway. After that movie. Was he an older dude? Uh, you know, 30 something. That's old, Jake. I mean, that's my age, so. Oh, uh, you're not 30. I'm almost 30. But, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, I, Oops. I definitely think. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, I could have covered that up a whole lot better than what I just did, didn't just, I? Let me just drop this and announce to the entire world that I dropped it. <laughs> But uh, uh, the IATSE strike, though. IATSE. Um, to, to piggyback on that, which I, I think is a big part of what's going on with this set. Uh, so after that whole thing, like mm-hmm. I, I mentioned earlier, they came to some sort of agreement. I don't really know what the agreement is. Sounds like they're trying to work out better hours for everyone. Um, and it's it seems like the, a lot of the union members aren't super thrilled with it. Um, no, because union members are very typically very picky. Well, they're like, let's just go for more, you know. Yeah. But what it sounds like is they're gonna settle on whatever agreement this is, and then reconvene in two years. Um, but um, right after that whole thing went through, um, Marvel Studios, which is Disney, uh, basically came out and were like, hey, um, every Marvel movie. That's supposed to come out is coming out like six months after that. Now <laughs> they, they basically came down. They were like, 
hey, you know every movie you were excited about? Uh, Thor Love and Thunder that was supposed to come out in May? Delay. Well, that's coming out in December now. Delay. You know, you know, like, so they basically came out and were like, everything's delayed. And <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think it's, I think it's fine. One I, last question on Rust, and then we'll put this to bed. Okay. Do you think if the movie is completed, which you believe the movie is going to be completed, mm-hmm. when the movie hits theaters, do you think this story gives it the punch that I explained earlier with Heath Ledger? Do you think that this movie is going to be more of a success because of this storyline that we're getting now? I think... Um, Remember, people are stupid. I actually do think it really depends on the... I think if the movie is somewhat good. Just like it has to be like a C. Let's say the movie is like a C. Like you watch it and you're like, that was okay. It it will do better business. If that movie is an absolute dumpster fire piece of crap movie, I don't think it's going to help it much. But people are going to... But opening weekend, take I'm taking you, transport with me, hold my hand. We're going to opening weekend. No one has seen the movie. Do you think opening weekend is going to be a huge success because of this story? So that's that's what Before I mean. Before people I, know it's going to be good or not. I think if it is a dumpster fire movie, it's like F tier, you know, one out of ten you know, type movie, I think people will see the poster in theaters and be like, that's the movie where, you know, Alec Baldwin killed someone. How about that? If it is like a five out of 10 movie, it's a C tier movie. Mm -hmm. I think it will boost the sales up because people will hear it's like, okay. And they'll be like, wow, that movie's okay. Even though someone died on set. I wonder what that's all about. I think these knuckle draggers that um, go to see movies, present company excluded no you're a knuckle dragger no the, yeah i totally am the, the knuckle draggers that go and see movies are going to go people are going to go and see this movie not because of the reviews not because of anything else i think that people are probably going to go see this movie just because it's someone that died well during the movie like they did for the batman that heath ledger died on people but, are going to go see it i think it's and then that's going to give the production company alec baldwin more money I, th- I, think I think that, that people are going to go see it just because of the story. I think the difference, though, and like what I was saying, uh, you know, about The Dark Knight um, is like The Dark Knight is a great movie. So it was like yes, it was. It's a great movie. Plus, he died uh, because, you know, what movie no one talks about Heath Ledger's actual last movie, which was uh, the legend of Dr. Parnassus or something. like Oh, that. I never heard of it. That was Heath Ledger's actual last movie. He was, that's the movie he died while he was filming. He Not, died while Batman was being released. Right. Gotcha. Well, it was being marketed and stuff. Like it was, it had been done filming for like nearly six months when he died. Oh, I didn't know that. So like, that's why I'm saying like, I think it has more to do with if it is an okay movie, I think people will be intrigued by that. Okay. If it is a dumpster fire movie like the Parnassus movie that had Heath Ledger in it, which was not a very good movie, um, I I don't think it will help the box office at all. It, like, cause like a great example of that, um, so, uh, Venom, the movie Venom, right, had a very troubled production, but it was an okay film, so people went out and were like, wow. I can't believe this is actually coming out. Let's go see it. Like, I have to know what it's all about. People are saying it's good, even though it had this trouble production. And I think that boosted its sales. Okay. But then on the polar opposite of that, uh, New Mutants, which is like an X-Men movie, had a very troubled production, same as Venom. Um, but the movie was ass. It was garbage. That movie flopped. And it didn't help it. So I really think it, because I I don't think people are, are going to sit through a trash movie. They'll sit through a, you've sat through trash movies. I'm a different kind of person. That's very true. You are a different kind of, weird. but like, I think people will sit through. Okay. Movies true. for like the science of it. They're not going to sit through Sharknado, <laughs> you know, 
I did. Well, I, Sharknado is a bad example because Sharknado is so bad it's good. But you know, yeah, it, you were going into Sharknado with the with the yeah, hopes yeah. of it being an absolute train wreck. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I see your point. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit more nuanced of a point than you probably wanted. No, but. it was a it was a point because it was your point, and I asked for your point. Indeed. Indeed. You want to transition to something else? Uh, how how what time? This is the this is the bad thing about the new setup. I don't I can't see the time. We're at forty eight minutes. Forty eight minutes. Oh God, we got to talk about something else. All right, let's transition. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to hit that button. Uh, you had to level very low, but that's okay. That's what happens when you have control of the board. I, I didn't even know that was <laughs> it's what's all falling apart for. I know what you wanna I know what you wanna dip into because I wanna hear you dip into it. What's that? Oh <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I okay folks, I'm going to get comfortable because Jake has I dove okay into or has begun his descent into the game of the squid i'm not very far in it i've watched the first two episodes that's it that's all i've all had time dude. i know i know i'm the worst um dude, okay meet me at my house pants off we can watch everything from start to finish okay um <laughs> but I, I do have thoughts. Please, I want to hear your thoughts. I have thoughts off the first two and episodes. And I'm going to do my best to not regurgitate and spoil it because I think when you get through this whole entire thing, dude, your mind is going to be BL owned, blown. Um, It's got, it's just from the first two episodes. One thing I think that this this show does in in spades like it, it's doing it really really well i think what makes this show such a um uh, iconic iconic it's like such a, cu- a cultural touchstone right now yes i think the reason it's like that um two reasons first reason i think the message of the show really connects with a lot of people especially post pandemic because definitely and this is just me off of the first two episodes okay first two this movie or show is a critique of capitalism. This is poor guy uh, is getting abused by the system. And the only way out is to be abused even more by the system. It, the system isn't fair. The system is broken. Um, You're going to be mad at yourself for hitting your desk, by the way. Um. <laughs> 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 Such a fucking kindergarten. Man. <laughs> um, yeah, but the system is broken. I'll touch it more lightly. Yeah. Um, I I think um, so. I think that is resonating with a lot of people, and I I think it it came out at a perfect time because a lot of people I think are feeling um, abused by the system right now. Um, I'm gonna give you a bell on that. And I think the other thing it does really well is. Uh, the characters and I'm a character man. You uh, are J- you're known as Jake Jake the character man. I think the character I think characters in in TV shows and movies are more important than plot and even story. Okay. If you have good characters it doesn't matter what your plot or your story is. Okay. Cuz if it's like Seinfeld, right? Like there was no story but the characters were so good. No, no, never watched it. Not that Squid Game is like Seinfeld. But <laughs> <laughs> but the ca- the characters so far, and they set them up so beautifully in the first episode. Even yes, um, they do. I will say I messaged you while I was watching the first episode. I was like, I think the main character is insufferably annoying. Mm. <laughs> Buzzer on that! I was so pissed. I I can't stand him. But- All I said was, "Stay with it, dude. Stay with it." But like, I feel like they had to make him so overly dependent on gambling and all that stuff these are very light spoilers because i'm not very far in the show but um right the you know i think they made him so dependent to make their point uh, the point about capitalism bad because with capitalism being that bad it drove him to do these very bad things um so i yeah i i like the characters a lot i i like grandpa you know grandpa's cool um hot hot chick 
that everyone loves. Uh, she's, I don't think it's the chick that's the. There is, you know, what I realized when I was watching this, there are some really good Asian p- actors, and a lot of these actors we've never been exposed to. Yeah, I mean, there's probably good actors everywhere in the world. Probably so, but there are some good looking actors in this movie in this movie in this tv series so you're two episodes in you are having a hard time suffering the main character who i don't even know his name all i can say his name is i don't know oh my god that was really offensive i apologize for that (laughs) ladies and gentlemen please leave it in the show i will um (laughs) the um we don't know who all these people are but you couldn't suffer the main character and all i told you was Stay with it. Can I make a prediction? Please. And I'm not going to tell you if your prediction is right or wrong, because I don't want to fuck this up for you. That My prediction is this is like the danger, the most dangerous game for whoever that guy is in, in the, in the room that's like watching them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like he gets off to this shit and like, you know, that that's it. Right. I mean, I don't think it, goes any deeper than that you i will reply to your prediction like this you are gonna love this at the end okay i'll stick with it you're gonna love this at the end because what your prediction is you're gonna love this at the end that's all i'm gonna say Mm -hmm. That's all my, I, I want to say so much more, but I'm not going to, dude. I'll try to. I'll, okay, I'll try to finish it by next week so we can do like a, an actual. I would love to deco. I would love to deconstruct it. Yeah, let's do like an actual like spoiler sort of deal. We can do next a week. We can do a spoiler. I would totally love to do it. You are going to fucking love it. I, I got to say something else. I just got you. Yeah. Mind fuck. Mind fuck. Okay. Lube your mind up because it's about to get fucked. <laughs> uh, f- f- uh, mind fuck. We got five minutes. Squid Game has officially, officially become Netflix's most successful TV program in the history of the flicks of net, reaching over 111 million fans and has been watched 82 million times in just the first 28 days of this release. Here's what some a lot of people don't know. This is not a new movie. This isn't new. The script is not new. The script has been around since 2009. Well, yeah, the guy's been trying to get it made. He's been then. shopping it for a long time, and people kept telling him, no, 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 no. Yeah. And I mean, can you imagine those guys at those production companies back at Alec Baldwin's movie production company, (laughs) how pissed they are right now that they passed on what has become the end of summer blockbuster series? Man, okay, you got to watch the rest of it because there's so much more I'm holding back right now and it's so hard for me to hold back. There's so much more that I want to talk about this, but this is the biggest thing, bigger than um, the upside down. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Bigger than Stranger Things. Bigger than anything that has ever been on the Netflix platform. Netflix has set themselves above every other streaming service, every other streaming production company with the success of Squid Game. I'm actually surprised um, by that. Um, Especially uh, notoriously I've seen online because I've watched the show in, in Korean with subtitles i i am i did too um because i i, I tend to if if a movie I, I like watching the movie in its native language because i feel like that is you read it i do you, now i find it troubling to read tv shows and movies but this i i, I found a way around it i never have an issue with it because like I, I don't know like you've done it before yeah well with anime anime and you know porn for foreign films foreign porn Foreign, for, foreign porn, yeah, because I need my story. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I, I don't have an issue with that, but I have heard that the dub is particularly bad. The English dub. 
I heard differently. I've heard that it is absolutely atrocious. I heard that it was actually pretty on par where it was done. So it was done very well. I haven't seen it personally. This is just what I've heard. Where you've heard that from other podcasts and other blogs that I read. I I've heard nothing but absolutely horrible things to the point where they're like, they straight up used the wrong line in the English dub because it was so cheaply done. And they just sort of brought people in. Um, the effects don't match the scenery at all. And like, yeah, it just. Is Will Smith doing one of the voiceovers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cannot do a Will Smith. Don't even try to do a Will Smith right now. Ma- Marquez Brownlee. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. Dude, I'm glad. Fortnite. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're watching it. It's it, it, You're going to, I think. When this is all said and done, when you get through all nine episodes, you're going to be as excited about it as I am. And if you're not, I will be thoroughly, well, thoroughly disappointed. I got to be honest with you, existence. Corey. I am worried right now. I'm overselling it. I, well, I think the world is overselling it to me where yeah. I'm going in like too overhyped. And even off the first episode, I, I think what really... Uh, uh, perturbed me about the first episode right is everyone had been talking about how this is the most just it's so graphic it's so and I watched it I'm like this I mean this ain't that graphic man. no I mean this is basically Hunger Games you know yeah. It, yeah but I will say this I was in that same mindset where I thought that I was being sold a bill of a bill of goods I thought that people were over hyping it I thought that they were really, really pitching it up, and it was just a fad. And you know me, Jake. I run against fads all the time. I don't want to be in the in the fad group. But I broke down one day when I asked you for a suggestion on what to watch because I was home. I was alone. My pants were off. I was bored. I was sad. I was crying. I was shirtless. I had ice cream. And you gave me a suggestion to watch. I went against your suggestion and I opened up Netflix Asshole. And, and I found squid games. And I remember seeing hashtag squid games on the talk of tick. And I heard the, the audio bit that I played earlier in the show. And I decided to just dive in. I said, you know what? I'm just going to go in and see what all the hullabaloo was like. I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed. It took me a while to catch it. And then after it was done, I took an even deeper dive online, looked at after interviews, and then shit just started making sense after that. It's one of those things. At the end of this, if you do not have the same affinity for it that I do, I will be thoroughly shocked speaking. You are the movie buff than I am. And I know this isn't a movie, it's a TV series, but it could very well be a fucking movie. But if you don't come out of this with the same affinity that I have, I will be thoroughly surprised and shocked. Honestly. Honestly, I will be I will be guffuffled. Well, I will I will do my damnedest. Damnedest to uh finish it by next week. So then um yeah, then we can do a, a more deep dive. Okay. Uh Uh, One thing I'm very excited about on Netflix that's coming out is uh, that new Cowboy Bebop series. Cowboy Bebop to Boopop? Yeah, Cowboy Bebop to Boopop. Is it it starring R2-D2? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. No, it's it's an anime adaptation um, that uh, it looks insane. They dropped the trailer for it. I'm going to have to show you the trailer after this, but it's it's wild. It's one of my favorite animes of all time. the anime it's from the 90s it's a, it's a, about a 26 episode anime is it cartoonish drawings and shit well i mean it's an anime but they're making a live action version of it oh. on on netflix right now mm. and um i i would say about cowboy bebop the original one is it's an anime that transcends the genre can you when you say cowboy bebop can you say cowboy bebop to bebop yeah, Cowboy Bebop to Boobop is <laughs> it's it, it is an anime that transcends the medium. Uh, it's got some of the best music I've heard in any show. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
The music is so, so, so good and so important. Some of the best characters I've seen in a television show, uh, period, uh, anime or not, uh, just some of the best characters ever. Uh, and the aesthetic is really cool. Um, and just a surprising uh, sort of payoff at the end. And to see it in live action is a little like concerning, right? Like I, I saw, a, you know, that they were making it. And I'm like, oh no, here we go again. Like Netflix is gonna ruin something I love. Like <laughs> here we go again. But then they dropped a uh, the intro, and the intro is almost like one for one to the anime. Yeah, and it looks awesome. It looks so good. And then they dropped this little like trailer thing, and it is so stylish mm. and clean. And it, I'm still scared. I'm still terrified that it's going to be bad, but I'm very excited. Okay. I have one question as we're up um, 104. Yeah. Are you aware that Squid Game is actually an actual game? Yeah. I, I heard that someone made it a game in Roblox. It's an actual real children's game. Yeah. Someone made it in Roblox. Yeah. I yeah. never knew that. Well, it, it wasn't until this show. No, it was, and they, they played this. This has been a game that people have played on playgrounds all over the world. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Seriously, it's an old children's game. Back in the day, before cell phones and video games, this was a game that you <laughs> took chalk and you drew out into the ground. You drew the square, you threw the circle, you drew the, the, the triangle on the ground with chalk, or if you were a poor black kid like I was. Use your blood. You don't use you don't use your blood because you know if you cut yourself, then you get whooping when you get home. Because now mama got to pay money for you to go to the doctor. But you would if you were a poor black child, you just drew out the shapes in the dirt, and you played it. Squid Game is actually a children's game, hmm. a real children's game. Well, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Do your closer, you boob, and tell me when to hit the button. Thank you so much for joining us in the first ever, well, not the first ever, but the first in a long time in-person episode. I mean, it's probably like really no different to the audio listeners, but you know. Uh, Other than the fact that it sounds fucking amazing. Sounds, sounds, well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe, like, follow us on whatever podcast app you're listening to us on right now. And uh, make sure you check out Last Week in Games uh, live every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Pacific Standard Time. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of new content. Me and my sister just dropped the next episode in our Chick Flick series. We are currently going through uh, all the Twilight movies. We just did Twilight New Moon. Go watch that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was fun to edit it. Uh, I'm excited to do the next one. So if you keep watching, I'll keep making them. Uh, mm. Make sure you check out Fat Guy Radio Show. Yeah, we don't need help. Okay. We don't need the help. We're good to go. And uh, with that, uh, five, six, seven, eight, eight. eight. <laughs>